I mean, I know this sounds weird, but the Grange Hill set was no place for kids to be. It was totally out of control. I mean, how could it not be? I mean, you take 30 kids, you know, give them fame and give them the money. You know, they're going to get up to stuff. I mean, you've heard those stories, you know, we flooded a bathroom and we smoked a bit of marijuana and stuff. But that was only the tip of the iceberg. It really was. But that's how it was. That's how it was being involved in a show like that. We'd be filming next door to the top of the pops. And, you know, we'd go in the studios and we'd talk to the bands. I, I remember, like, hanging out with Soft Cell. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd do ecstasy with Mark Harmon. I'd smoke weed, the specials. You know, the Madness Boys. I was taking speed with these guys. I was out all the time. People would offer me drink, and they'd offer me drugs, and girls would throw themselves at me. I won a BAFTA. I met the Queen. I went to the White House, met Nancy Reagan. I was telling the kids of the world, just say no. And 10 minutes later, I was in the Lincoln bedroom doing disco biscuits with Doogie Howser. I mean, I'm not blaming the show for my downfall. Sounds like you are. And you know what we talk about with the blame game, don't we? Yeah, because every time you point the finger of blame at someone, like this, there are three fingers right here pointing straight back at you, aren't there? I don't know what the... Well, let's tuck that under there. Nobody wins the blame game, nobody. You know, because my character got bullied on the show. <laughs> got bullied a lot and he got called names like Gutsy and Fatty and... And eventually, people would think they could get away with it in the street and they would... They'd call me the same sort of names, you know, they'd... Roland, you fat bastard, you fat wanker. Fatso, fatty, gut bucket, melon belly, jelly roll, Buddha face, fat twat, fat idiot. So he eats a lot. And then later on, fat boy not so slim. Yeah, when I left Grange Hill, you know, I just wanted to go upwards and onwards. You know, I just wanted to go out there, want to get out in the world. And I was quite lucky. I got a call from the producers of uh, Black Adder, and they wanted me in their Christmas special with the likes of Jim Broadbent, Rowan Atkinson, Robbie Coltrane. And I thought to myself, wonderful. I thought, how good is this? I said, you know, I thought, here's my chance to show the world what a range I've got as an actor. You know, I, I really thought that I'm going to be in this sort of costume piece, and I just thought, you know what, this is it. You know, no more being just that fat kid from Grange Hill. Get back! <laughs> Felicitous compliments of the gorging season to you, sir. Peace on earth and fat tums to all men. Well, indeed, indeed. And what of your little orphan charges? Well, I don't think I charges them enough, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Enormous orphan number three. That's what it said in the credits. Enormous orphan number three. He wasn't even in the top two enormous orphans. Wasn't quite the departure you were hoping for, was it? <clears throat> no, it, it wasn't, no. I mean, he basically had gone from playing a fat kid to playing an enormously fat kid, which, if anything, is a bit worse. The point is, I, this show was going to take me to the top of the A-list. It didn't. It took me on a little bender. Six-year bender. Yeah, but during this time, I did the rehab thing. Well, to be fair, what you actually did was the rehab, relapse, rehab, relapse, prison, getting out party, massive relapse, rehab thing. Yeah. But I still managed to get work. Two, three, go! <laughs> Yeah, that really wasn't your best work, was it? No. <laughs> so, after that, I, I sacked my manager. But, yeah, to be fair, you had to sack him because he said, get out of my office, you fat, fat fuck, and push you down the stairs. Yeah, that's how I got this scar. That's how you got that scar. Oh, yeah. And then I thought to myself, you know what, air come? No more. This is it. You have to get yourself together. Get your act together, son. So I, I decided to sort my life out. I really did. Yeah, and it was like sort of my epiphany moment. You know, it and really was. 
To be honest about it, it was also your court in possession and subsequently issued with a court order moment, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was. And that's how I met Dave. It began life as a court-ordered relationship, and then I suppose over time it became a court-ordered friendship. It was another spelling jowl, or go with Dave. Technically, I wasn't supposed to be his sponsor, but when I found out it was Roland Browning, I pushed a few people out of the way. <laughs> I pushed a few people out of the way to get rolling. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have no one else who gives me that strength. And, and I think it's because we're both actors, so we understand each other. I hand them a coffee, I hand them a flyer. Erkan clumsily calls it afterbirth. <laughs> it's not, it's after birth because it's about my life. It's about everything that's happened to me since my birth. Unfortunately, he's, he's the only one who's seen the show so far. You could call it a one-man audience as well as a one-man show, sadly. Dave's helped me along, you know, he's, he's given me strength, he's, he's given me support, but you know what? You know what? I'm in a good place at this moment. I, I really am. I'm, I have a great apartment. I'm not in debt anymore. I pay my bills. Um, I've got a great job in a record store that I love, which which my girlfriend owns. Oh, uh, now, hang on. You know, I, I know what you're saying, but it's uh, it's not, really, not a girlfriend, is it? It's more like a friend who's a girl. Well, that's that's what I meant. I got a call last week from uh, an American. Nice. Yeah, they said hello. Is that air car? I said yeah. And they said, hello, we're calling from Quentin Tarantino's people. Yeah? <laughs> Quentin Tarantino? Yeah, Quentin Tarantino's people. Now, they were casting for a British gangster movie. And, you know, Quentin Tarantino's got that quirky casting. Uh, he wanted me. And it's sort of... I don't know if I really want it, to be honest. This is a really good chance for you to build some bridges with your family, because your dad... You know, he always used to say that you were a massive puff for being an actor, but does he think Quentin Tarantino's a puff? No, he... He, he doesn't, despite the fact he's called Quentin. My mum, she was like a typical stage mother. Uh, she wanted to be an actress, and she sort of lived it through me. No, well, look, hang on. It was a lot worse than that, wasn't it? I mean, what his mum actually said was, I would rather have a famous drug addict son than a fit and healthy nobody. That wasn't her exact words. She didn't Those say were, it like that. She did. Those, that was her exact words. I'm quoting her. She used it as part of the toast at your brother's wedding. I'm worried. I'm worried to get back into this, this business. You know, this, this call could go both ways. But to be honest, this business that I'm in, show business, you know, it, it picked me up. I was there and then it just spat me out. I hear what you're saying, but I think, I think together we are ready for that. The reason I think that, because last time you got chewed up and spat out by a load of drunk children. This time, you're going to get nurtured by John Travolta. Think about that. No one said John Travolta's involved yet, Dave. No, he might not be involved, but if, he's got his own plane, for God's sake. He'll come and visit the set, even if he's not in it. And why would he want that, Dave? Well, because he's a very good friend of Quentin's. John Travolta. Greece, then... Nothing, nothing for years. And then suddenly Tarantino comes along. Massive star, he's got his own plane. You know, he, he is a pilot, he is a pilot. He is a pilot. And I think that's something that Erkan can aim for. He can shoot for that. And I'll be there with him. I'll be his co-pilot. I'll be in the cockpit with him. And I don't know if I'm, if at this moment I'm ready for that, you know? I've got to think long and hard about it. I can't just take that step forward. I just really can't. Sorry, world <sighs> yeah, so. I'll get there, and I know I'll get there in the end. But I'd rather.